first thing we need to do when building our racing car is to build the frame. This frame will go inside your card model of the racing car later on. Like that. To begin with, you'll have to pre-cut a 420 millimeter piece of timber. This particular timber is from B&Q and it's 34 millimeters in width and 18 millimeters in depth. So what I'm going to show you is how to mark out the four pieces of timber that you will require onto your timber ready to cut to size. You will need four pieces in total. You will need two sides which are 180 millimeters in length and the front and the back piece which are 25 millimeters in length. When marking out your timber, you'll need a ruler, a sharp pencil, and a tri square. This will help you mark lines on your timber at 90 degrees. So first of all, I'm going to mark my two side pieces, which are 100 millimeters, 180 millimeters in length. So that's 180 millimeters in length. So from the end of my timber, okay, I will mark 180 millimeters, which is 18 centimeters. Okay, just place a mark at the top of your timber. Then using your tri square, this edge of the tri square, okay, will need to go directly against the edge of your timber, like so. You can then slide it in position so it's tight against the timber and in line with the mark you've made on your timber. You can then draw a straight line at 90 degrees. Pupils will tend to put the tri square on like this without putting this edge against the timber. So they'll end up drawing a line which is not at 90 degrees. They need to make sure that this edge is pushed against the edge of their timber really tight so then you can draw a line against that ruler at 90 degrees. I would advise to use steel rules as they start at the end at zero. Okay, so these can be bought at the watch shop for just a pound. From the line I've just marked, I'm now gonna place my steel rule against that line and I'm going to mark another 180 millimeters, which is 18 centimeters. I then get my tri square. I place the edge of the tri square tight against my timber and slide it over to my mark. So it's directly in line with my mark. And then just do a pencil line down like that. From the last line I've marked, now I need to measure from that line 25 millimeters and draw a line. So place your ruler tight against the line that you've just marked. Measure 25 millimeters and put a mark. Get the tri square. Place it tight against the edge of your timber in line with the mark and draw a line down. Then repeat the process for the next piece, which again is 25 millimeters. You should find that there's about five or 10 millimeters waste at the end of your piece of wood. You can shade that in. What I tend to do is use this for the pupils uh, with my markings out on. So when they have marked out their timber, they can come along with their timber and align it with my piece just to check before they cut that they have marked it out accurately. Because what we've got to remember is you can mark out as many times as you want, but you can only cut once. Okay, so what I've got here is a, is a bench hook and this will aid us to cut a line uh, through our timber at 90 degrees. And it also supports the timber when we're pushing the 
tensor against the wood so it'll stop it from moving forward so you've got more control over your timber what i've done here is uh, against the bench truck i glued a piece of timber with a glue gun okay which is in line with the back piece of the bench truck okay at 90 degrees okay so i glued that down but also i've measured it so the wood, their wood can slide in and out of it as well, okay? So what they need to do on this edge, okay? This edge of the bench hook, they need to align the line they have marked against this block, this edge here, okay? You can see then when you have your tenon saw, that when they put the tenon saw on their piece of wood and against this block, the tenon saw is now at 90 degrees. Right, for demonstration purposes, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you um, how to cut this piece of timber and then I'm going to show you then uh, picture, pictures of me then um, cutting the timber so you can see me cutting it too. So this is a tenon saw. You can buy these for about £3 from Amazon. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just show you how to cut this piece of timber along this line okay using a tenon saw okay so what we do we align the line with the, the back of the bench truck okay on that edge so when we place the tenon saw against that edge our saw is directly in line at 90 degrees with the line that we've marked what i do then is i place my fingers at the back of the hook okay away from the saw blade and my thumb then against the this piece of wood here, okay? So when you push the wood forward now, all right, this block will stop the wood going forward and this block should stop that piece of wood going back. But still your fingers your, with your left or right hand should be placed on the back of the block like this, your four fingers away from the blade and your thumb at the back of the timber like so, okay? now. What children tend to do is, is think they can cut through this in one go and start going hell for leather. Now, first of all, what they need to do is just to uh, drag the saw back along their line a few times. Okay, making sure they keep that tenon saw against this block. Okay. So you can see now I'm creating sort of a groove in my timber. This will give some sort of a path for the tin saw to follow. So I'd normally drag it back a few times. Once I've got that path, I just drag the tin saw back a few times. Now I've got a certain depth with my path. I'm now ready to cut. Now what we tend to do, um, what the children tend to do, is dig with the saw and they can't push it. Okay, again, this is a brand new short saw, so it, it might be a bit tough to use at first. But again, make sure your fingers are here and your thumb is at the back, away from the saw blade. And once they've got that path, get them to just gently push that saw back and forth. Now, what they tend to do, the pupils, they just want to use the saw, the little, just part of the saw in the middle, you know, like this. And they take hours to cut it. What, they, what you want to explain is, the saw has got all those teeth for a reason, and that's to use them all. So, we just lightly bring it back, don't dig with it, and lightly push it forward. You don't have to go really fast, and then there is your cut, and you should have a cut at 90 degrees. You'll have some wood splinter on the end, but we can get some sandpaper, and we can sand that flat later. Okay, now what I'm going to do is cut the other piece, which is 180 millimeters. Now what the pupils will probably tend to do, okay, is get this shortest piece here and put that in line with the bench hook. So, when they put that in, they've only got a small amount of wood to hold, okay? What is best to do is put the largest piece in against the hook, okay? Slide that line again in line with the back of the bench truck. OK, 
okay? And then you're ready to cut again. When you hold the tenon saw, all right, you want to get the pupils to hold it like this and get the index finger and place it on, on the handle like so. It gives it more rigidity when you're cutting, okay? So flexible, more rigidity, okay? So get them to place their index finger along the top of the handle like so. They don't have to grip it for dear life, okay? Just grip it enough so they've got, they've got a good hold in their hand. So again, coming up to this now, okay? So you can see it from this angle. I place my four fingers away from the cut, but against the back of the, the bench hook. My thumb away from the cut to the back of the wood. I can then, I can place my index finger just to support the top of the wood, my wood, okay? Like that, as long as it's away from the cut. So my hand is in that position. I'll, I'll give you a close up later. So then when I start, Okay, like I said, you draw the tenon saw back. Remember to use the finger, the index finger. Draw it back so the kids, the pupils, create a path in there, like a guide for the saw to follow. You know, they could go back five or six times. Okay, so they just apply a little bit of pressure at that time, like that. So what they should have there is like a path of 90 degrees now. So again, set yourself up, okay? Don't have the pupils standing too close to the wood like that because they won't be able to push the saw back. So they want to just spread their legs out, okay? And get the, your elbow, um, your elbow? Yeah, your elbow sort of to the side of your body so that gives you that motion. So if your body's in a weight, they can't do much. If you step to the side of the saw, you've got that motion, okay? So again, don't get the kids to dig with the saw like this because it won't go anywhere, okay? Just get the kids, like I said, the people to make that path and then you're ready. So just push in that saw back and forth. Like I said, get them to use the whole saw, not just the middle like this. Just use a lot of energy and you start sweating. So <laughs> what you want to do is just push the saw very gently, back and forth. Just let the saw do the work. Now what I need to do is cut the, the final two pieces. This will be the front and the back of the frame. So what we've got is our two pieces at 25 mil and a piece of waste at the end. What we wanna do first of all, is that we wanna cut that piece of waste away, first of all. So what the kids, what the pupils will tend to do is they will put that against the edge there and try and cut it like that. So they got very little to hold on there, all right? So we put the largest bit, like I said before, into, onto the bench hook. So we've got something to hold on to with our fingers, okay? Remember, this is why I put this piece of wood on the back, because it gives you that sort of, um, uh, sort of that back piece to stop that wood from moving back, and this will stop the wood from moving forward to give the children some support. So again, let's put the waist in line with front of our bench hook. Again, four fingers at the back. This finger then can go in the middle of our wood just to support it there, and the finger, your thumb at the back. Make sure the saw, the tenon saw, is in line with the line that you've marked, and in line with the, the block at the back. And then, like I said, drag this back a few times. You can drag it back as, as many times as you want just to give them that sort of confidence first. Okay. All right, and then when they're ready, again, using the whole saw, again, okay. Just very slowly this time, not digging the saw, pushing the saw. Keeping the saw against this block. They tend to want to go out here, no. They've got to keep that against the block because that's when it starts, their lines start to go wonky. So you want to keep, make sure they keep it against the block. And take their time. It doesn't matter how long it takes, let them take their time. Okay. Go. Now we 
final piece. Again, this is going to get a little bit more trickier. All right. So we place our piece, our line against there. Okay, our four fingers on the back, our finger away from the cut, just to support it. And again, making sure that line is in the in line with the back. So this is a bit more challenging, so let them take their time. Okay, so again, make sure that line is in line with the block. Okay, and then just take their time. Just in that small groove as, as accurately as they can by taking their time. Now, once you've got that groove, it's pretty straightforward. So making sure they apply pressure with this finger on there, again keeping it away from the cut. As long as they've got that groove in there and they're taking their time, there's no chance of this saw sliding. Okay? So they can make as much groove as they want. And when the saw is ready, okay? when the saw is ready, remember not to dig because it ain't going to go anywhere. All right, and they're going to snap their piece of wood by doing that. So they just want to lightly drag it back and forth. Remember this finger as well? Okay, it keeps the blade <coughs> more rigid. So very gently, you're just using the whole saw. The more of the saw you use, the better. Not the bit in the middle like this. Right, you want to push the saw back and forth. Start digging, not digging, pushing the saw into the wood back and forth. Until they come to the end all right and again you will have some um, splinters at the end but what we can do is use some sandpaper later to cut those out voila so this is your bench hook the side view okay so this is where you've got the the back the, the front of the bench hook okay and then you've got my piece of timber all right and that's where the pupils will slide their work into like that, all right? So like I said, this when you're sawing, this back, back block here will stop the wood from moving forward, and this back block will also stop it moving back, okay? So um, makes it a little bit more safer for the pupils. And what you've got at the back there is the hook, okay? Now that hooks to the edge of your table. So what we do, you get the bench hook, the pupil, and they slide it tight against, okay, their table. What you can do then is you can buy these little speed clamps, okay, and then you can support the bench hook at one side, all right, and that will stop the, the bench hook from moving from that position. The next thing you need to do, okay, is to drill the holes for the axle to go through. Okay, so we need to make sure these are accurate here and here. So the best way to do that is to firstly get your two longest pieces of wood, put them together like so, and just get some masking tape, making sure they're flush at each end. like that okay now what we need to do then is that I will supply you with this now this is a template all right and this will help the children mark out their holes accurately okay for the axle pieces before I begin to mark out the holes what I need to do is to mark this as the back of my car this as the base that's the top so we've got the base that's where the base of the car is <clears throat> and then the front now this is very important okay and what you're going to do then you're going to flip it over like this to the left and now we're going to write back this side base and then the front here Okay, so then I'm gonna flip it back over now 
So my back is at the this side now, on my right side. When I flip it over, it'll be on my left side. So using the template now, this is the back of the template and this is the back of my piece of timber. I'm gonna make sure that this edge of the back of the template is flush with the back of my timber there, okay? So the right angle of your template must be with the right angle at the back of your timber. Okay, like that. And make sure the template is flat with your base. Okay, so it's perfectly in line with the back and the base. Then using a pencil, we can then mark the holes. In the two pre-punch holes that I've got in my template. So when I remove my template now, I know exactly where to drill my holes for the axles. Now, I'm not gonna mark them on the other side because what we're going to do, the reason why we take these two pieces together is because we're gonna directly drill through there and through to the bottom, okay? So when we take these two apart then, the holes, all right, for each side should be directly in line. Hello, workshoppers. Now, what we're gonna do next with the car, okay, so we've cut our two pieces out, okay? Um, and we've cut our two small pieces, and we've used this template to mark the two holes which we're gonna drill. Now, I'm using um, four mil dowels with mine, you can use five. Um, I'm gonna use a, because I'm using four mil uh, dowels for my axles, I'm gonna use a five mil drill bit. Okay, it's a five mil drill wood bit. Now, I am going to use um, a power drill to drill these holes. So you might need to, uh, well, obviously supervise the pupils, but you might need um, one of the support staff or yourself to drill these holes for the pupils. Um, I am looking at little hand drills, okay, which come with, with drill bits, which are much lighter for the pupils to use. So um, I bought one and I'm just waiting for it to come through um, from Amazon. So I'm gonna use this for today's uh, demonstration. Um, what I've got here, okay, is a machine vise. Now they're about 20 pounds when I bought it from Amazon, okay? It's very heavy and you can fix it to a table, okay? Um, now, when I'm gonna drill these holes, what happens is, when you drill through these holes and you come to the back of your timber, it will split when the drill piece comes through. So what I've done is just cut a scrap bit of wood and I'm gonna sit my two pieces of timber on top of that. So when the drill bit goes through, the two pieces, when I take it off and look at the bottom, I should have some nicely drilled holes without too many splinters. What I like about this machine, guys, is that it's got a hole in the middle of the jaws, okay? So uh, you, when you drill through, you're drilling directly through that hole and not into the steel, okay? Because that'll just break your drill bit, all right? So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna place my scrap piece of wood in between the jaws. Now the jaws are open and closed using this, okay, this handle. So if you teach your mechanisms, you've got um, two movements here. You've got a rotary movement, and then you've got a rotary that turns into a linear movement. So you can teach a bit of mechanisms that way. So what I'm gonna do, it's not tighten it just yet. I then are gonna place the hole I'm gonna drill so it's over this hole, okay, in the machine vise. All right, so there. And then I'm gonna place, tighten that in the jaws. Not too tight, because you're gonna dent your wood, okay? Just enough to keep it sturdy. All right, now like I said, um, if you're gonna use uh, a power drill, because I know power drills are expensive, um, you know, the support staff or yourself can drill these holes for the pupils, but like I said, I am looking into lightweight drills, uh, which the pupils could have more control over. 
If a pupil is going to um, use a drill or yourself, make sure you've got protective goggles on and you tie your hair back. Okay, that's not a problem in my case, but always make sure the pupils have got no loose clothing, um, their clothes are tucked in, etc. their hair is tied back and um, they're wearing safety, go uh, safety glasses. So here we go, I'm ready to go. So with the drill, what I'm gonna do, okay, is place the drill in the center of the hole. Okay, make a little piercing. Then I'm gonna lift the drill so it's at 90 degrees. And then I'm gonna slowly press the drill on and slowly drill through. Keeping that drill nice and steady and straight. Okay, that should be all the way through now. I shouldn't go through to my granite kitchen worktop. My wife will be very angry. So now I put the, to get it out, I put it in reverse and press the drill on. Hold on to my piece of wood and just slowly drill back. And there's your hole. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna show you how to hold the drill, okay, while drilling through your hole. So again, I've drilled this hole now so I can remove it from the machine rise. And at the back now, I've got that lovely, nice shaped hole with no splinters as I placed a piece of timber underneath my work. So again, I'm gonna place that hole that I'm gonna drill over the hole in the machine vise and tighten it up. Now, in order to drill, and so again, I'm using a five mil drill bit because I'm using four mil dowels. I'm going to place the drill bit into the middle of the hole, just make a small imprint, okay? Then you place your right or left hand, okay, onto the handle of the drill and your trigger finger onto the trigger and place your left or your right hand on top of the drill here. Okay, so you've got control over it, all right? So the reason I put it in a vise is because it holds it in place and gives me two hands to work with. It's also safer as well. So I'm gonna place my hand on the drill, then I'm gonna place the drill so it's at 90 degrees, okay? And then I'm gonna look over the drill, okay? Over the drill, so I can see where I'm drilling. So I'm not gonna come back like this, okay, over the drill. Because what you should have is your shoulder sort of placed on top of the drill, so over the drill, because what you're gonna do is sort of apply pressure with that. So we place the hand on top of the drill, okay, 90 degrees and very slowly hit that trigger. And very slowly go through your timber. Okay, and when it's done, place the drill in reverse, hold your timber down with your hands, and then pull back very slowly with the trigger, with your trigger finger is pressed lightly on the drill drill back out. Okay, now we want to glue the frame together. Now there's two methods I'm gonna show you how to do this. I'm gonna use one method of using a glue gun and one method of using PVA and clamping it together using elastic bands. So it's up to you which one you want to use. Get some scissors or you can use a steel rule. Okay, to masking tape. Now, before you put on the pad, all right, what we need to do is put one, put them down like this. So you've got the back, the back, the base, the base, the front, the front. So the base is facing your left hand and your right hand. And what we're gonna do with that then we're gonna just lift them up like this. Then we're gonna get our back piece and the front piece. And now we're ready to glue together. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn my sides flat. I'm gonna place a piece of glue on the back and then my side then, and my, front, my back piece, I'm gonna turn to the side and press that to glue and squeeze it together. Okay. 
I've got paper under this. It's not a very good idea to put paper under there. Um, then a piece of glue, squirt on the front. So my hands are well away from the glue. Okay, and then I turn my front piece and I push down. Okay, so as you can see, this is a, probably a quicker process than PVA because you've got to wait till it dries. And then I'm going to place um, a piece of glue on that piece and on this piece. Then don't put that like that because you've got to turn it like this. So your base and the back and the front are facing towards you. All right, just a key tip there. And then glue that to the top, making sure all the edges are as flush as possible, especially the holes are in line. Okay, there we are, and that's your frame. The next stage then is to go onto my YouTube channel and click on the description, and there will be a link then to this particular template. Uh, what the pupils can do with this, they can print it out and they can either use felts or colouring pencils to colour it in. Um, they could um, even use this on the computer and add graphics from Google themselves. Uh, it's entirely up to you what they want to do with this or what you want to do with it really. But you will find a link to this particular template on my YouTube channel with this particular project. I will also be providing a link to this particular template so you can have a go yourself. Um, and also if the pupils want to make this particular one, they can. So I printed my design on card. This will give it, uh, make it a bit more stronger. There will also be a separate template on the link for the driver too. Now I've printed mine out, but there are other options to uh, make this um, make this car. Uh, you can print the net out uh, on coloured card, okay? So then the pupils then can go on the internet and print out some graphics for it and stick those graphics on. Um, and also what they can do as well, they can um, colour in themselves as well, either using uh, markers or colouring pencils. One thing I wouldn't do with the car is laminate it, okay? So if you want a nice glossy finish on your car, the other alternative I would use is sticky back plastic. So you, again, you don't have to use this, uh, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna show you a quick technique of how to quickly use sticky back plastic on top of your work. So firstly, I placed my card on top of the sticky back plastic um, on the back and I've marked out the amount of material I need and I cut around that okay like so um, now what I'm going to do with this now okay the sticky back plastic is have the shiny surface on face down and the grid facing up and I'm going to now place some masking tape in the four corners of stick back plastic grid make sure it's stretched out it's nice and flat I then going to remove one piece of masking tape and then and and stick the sticky back plastic from one end and pull it out 45 degrees or at an angle and I'm going to place the mask can take back down on the sticky back plastic to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna make my way to the other corner, take that off, pinch it down with my finger, move it across, make sure it's nice and tight. Place the mask and tape on top, then slide it over to the other corner, take the mask and tape off, make sure it's nice and tight, place the mask and tape on and then slide it to the other corner and 
place the masking tape on there. So you've got a nice flat surface. And all you need to do is turn the card upside down. Okay, face first. And then just very slowly place it on top and smooth it out. What I do then is I get the masking tape here and here. I pull it up and I flip it upside down and then I press the sticky pack plastic out. So I've got a nice flat surface on my sticky back plastic. Once it's down, you need to cut the excess off. So maybe one of the support staff or yourself could cut these for the kids using a knife. Always use a steel rule. Okay. And a cutting mat. I wouldn't let the kids do this. Okay. Another option they could do is they could slide the card into a guillotine and cut along the card to cut that excess off. So there's ways around it. So the first thing I advise to do, okay, is to cut this piece out here. It says cut out, and that's the hole, okay, for the driver to go into. Now, I always cut that out first because I always forget it because I end up fixing it all together and then I haven't cut this out. So I'm gonna cut this out first so I don't forget. So again, um, the support staff or yourselves or a parent, okay, using a steel rule and the cutting mat and use um, a cutting knife, okay, to cut that out first. So now I've got the peace of mind that that is cut out before I fold it. So first of all, I've just cut the car out, okay, to start with. Now the kids can use scissors with this, or uh, again, like I said, you might have some support staff or yourselves who, who could cut round it with, um, with scissors or a, a craft knife. Um, but anything like that, always make sure that the pupils have supervision depending on their age. Uh, the next thing we need to do now is to fold all the fold lines. So what I use to score the edges of uh, the lines, okay, in order to fold my template, is I use um, um, a kitchen knife, a blunt kitchen knife, sort of got a, a round edge on it. Um, so, and I use a steel rule, okay? So I look at where my lines are, I align the ruler up, and I use the front edge of the knife, okay? But the rounded edge, but I don't press hard. All you need to do is to run that knife, okay, very gently along that edge, because what you don't wanna do is cut through the card or cut through your sticky back plastic. So just very gently. And what we'll find then, hopefully, is that you have a nice, perfect fold uh, in your card. Notice a wet as well, I've got some tabs here in the back piece and I just align the line all the way through. Okay, so with the craft, uh, with the, 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 the bent table knife then, I can run it along that whole line. Okay, and then I can then fold all those lines in one instead of doing them individually, like so. This, uh, this particular tab is, is pretty tricky. So after I've scored it, I turn it over and then I slightly fold it so I can find the line. I just place a steel rule against the line, okay? And then along that line, and I just push that scored line against the edge of my ruler just to get that nice fold. Okay, once all the edges are folded, all the lines, fold lines are folded, any tabs, okay. 
What we need to do now is to hole punch these holes for the axles, which are in the, on the side of your car. Okay, they're highlighted in black. Okay, so what I've got here is a hole punch, which is about a pound on Amazon. Okay, and we slide the hole punch up until we see the black hole or the black mark and inside the hole of the punch. So we slide it towards there, there's the black mark and I can punch it accurately. Okay, so one there. It's essential that these holes line up so they need to be accurate with this. So they might need some support because these holes need to line up with the holes in our timber. Because I've um, put sticky back plastic on this, um, I'm going to have to either glue it together with a glue gun or double sided tape. Uh, so I placed double sided tape um, on my tabs. Um, cut around the access with some scissors. This one's pretty tricky. So what I do is I just lift that side up along the line like that and then flip it over. And then I place my ruler against the tab. And then using a craft knife, I cut along that tab with a craft knife. But like I said, if you've made your templates out of card, just purely out of card, you can just use print stick, so it's, it's a lot easier. All right, but I've only added um, uh, sticky black plastics for aesthetics and to make it more durable, but you can simply just print your design out on card and glue it together. It still works. And now we're ready to fix it together. I've removed all my, all the um, top of the uh, double-sided tape. Like I said, if you're using a glue gun, do one at a time. Okay, but if you're using print stick again, you can do one at a time as well if you've printed it out on card. So I'm just going to now join this back piece together first. So make sure everything's in line. And you glue because that's essential. Okay, so there's my back piece there. All right, and I'm going to do the the angle the. This, this particular uh, piece of the car will slope. So I'm gonna do those next, like so, once you get it. So again, I'm just gonna fold that in, that piece. So it's got a nice fold. And then I'm just gonna very carefully align that. So that's the challenging bit. And then just seal it. Um, okay, same again, fold that tab in. seal it inside. Um, so now the front bit, I'm going to glue the grill onto there and then that piece inside. Okay. And there you have it. Your 3D racing car, which is ready to be stuck to the frame. Okay, fixing your car okay to the frame now i'm going to use uh, double sided tape for this um i recommend uh, but also if you're going to use double sided tape uh, the pupils are going to need a bit of support for this okay with my frame i've got the base okay because i've written base on there facing towards my body all right um, and I've stuck a bit of double-sided tape in the middle, okay, on the top, so I can still see my right in the base there, all right? And I've done the same, so if you flip it over on the other side, so in the middle, on the top, not the base, the top, I've stuck some double-sided tape. So this is a very careful process now. So we remove the double-sided tape from one side and then the other. Whatever you do, don't place this back down on the table because it will stick. Make sure your base then is facing the table, on top of the table with the back 
facing to the right of you on the right hand side. It's essential now that we get these holes, all right, in your template in line with the holes that you've drilled on your timber. So I'm going to stick down one side at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this back piece here, okay, because remember we, we measured the template from the back, all right, that the back piece here is tight with the back piece here and your holes should align. Okay, so you can see I can still take that off. So I'm just gonna turn it. Okay, making sure that the, the template is in line with the bottom and with my holes and just press it in the middle, only gently. Just slightly tap it. Okay, turn it over. Okay, align the holes there. Okay. Best you can. If you're happy. And press that down there. Okay. And that should hold your template or your, your card uh, model in place on the frame. Okay, so you can see the holes align. And then we're ready to put the wheels on and the cam. Okay, next thing you need now is your uh, two, two axles to go on your racing car to put the wheels on and the cam. All right, now you need two pieces at 65 millimeters. All right, so what I do in order to cut this, now again, uh, yourself, um, your teaching assistant or a parent um, can do this. So I measure along my ruler, 65 mil. Okay. Then I will just get a craft knife and then I will sort of press into the wood and then just spin it round, making small little cuts into the wood. Okay. And then what I'll allow you to do then is that will just snap. Simple as that. Just have some sandpaper, some light sandpaper at hand. And just sand the splinters off the end of the wood. And there you've got your two axles ready. To place the wheels on the car, what you'll need is four discs, okay, MDF discs. Okay, you can buy these, which are already uh, cut and a hole in place but make sure the hole is the same size as your dowel. So uh, the, these are four millimeters diameter. Uh, so my axles, uh, my dowels are four million diameter as well. So you need four of those, the wheels. I also bought some um, 20 mil discs with no hole in it, because these will be the stopper to stop the wheel from falling off. And what I've done is with one of those 20 mil discs, okay, something you can prepare for your class, is that I drilled uh, a cam hole. Okay, now a cam hole is off center, it's drilled off center, all right? So you've got a small space below the drill hole and a large space, a larger space above the drill hole. And that's how a cam works. So when it turns, okay, you, um, it's smaller on the bottom and then it will then get larger at the top, pushing the follower or whatever is pushing upwards. And then when it turns round, it gets shorter in depth and then the follower will drop. Okay, so I've drilled those holes at three millimeters so I get a real tight fit on my dowel because otherwise you'll find that um, after time, this will get loose and start to spin round, which you don't want to do. You want a nice tight fit. So first of all, let's put the cam, okay, on the car. So you'll need one of your axles and your cam. You turn your car upside down, so this is the back, okay. All right, and you put your axle through one of your holes and then align the axle with your cam hole. It will be tight, a tight fit at start, okay. So you'll just need some wiggling round to push that doll through. Make it go through the other hole and you want that cam in the center. Okay, we can adjust that later on. All 
right? So it needs to be in the center of where that square you cut out is because that is where your little driver is going to go and the little driver is going to sit on top of that cam so it needs to be in the middle. What you can do then is that I bought these from B&Q. Uh, what they are, they're little plugs that you place on um, screw heads. So all you do with this is you take the cap off and you're left with this piece. Now this piece then will go on the axle on the outside, okay? Um, that will then leave a gap between the, the frame and the wheel, all right? Um, so the wheels don't catch with the frame, so you get a nice turn in motion. And then finally, you place your um, cams, or your, your wheels, sorry, on the end. Okay, and adjust accordingly. So that cam then, okay, is in the middle of the square. So when you turn that wheel then, okay, you'll see that cam turn. All right. Same process on the front wheels, but without the cam this time. So uh, place your axle through, okay, the holes you drilled. Place your spacers on. These are very cheap to buy in B&Q. And then you place your wheels okay, on each end. So if you've measured that right, okay, which is 65 mil, hopefully, that you'll see the end of the dowel the end of the dowel sticking out. So what we're gonna do is place a bit of glue on there, okay, with the glue gun, and then we're gonna place the stopper on top, and hopefully that'll prevent the wheel from falling off. Okay. Uh, another way of gluing the wheels on that might make it a bit stronger, all right, is doing this with one hand, so excuse, is place the glue in the hole, okay? And then place that wheel on top like that and press down. I think that's the best way to do it because you get a good connection there. Um, good, better connection there with the spacer as well. So I think that's the best way to do your, um, your, to fix your wheels on your axle, okay? Next thing we want to do is we want to um, stick the spoiler to the back of the car. All right, so what you'll need is two bendy straws. All right, um, so you bend the straws around about 45 degrees, and then you measure from the top of the bendy straw about three centimeters, 30 millimeters, and you just cut those off. All right, here and here. All right. Then on the top of your template, you'll have two holes marked out. That's where you need to glue the straw on top of. So you need a little bit of patience with this. Okay, so you place a blob of glue. Okay, where those that hole is. And you're just gonna have to hold it there. So the, the, the back of the straw, the pointy straw is facing outwards.
So now you should have the car complete with the cam, which should be in the center of that square that you cut out. So we can see it on the bottom there. All right. Now our character, we should have cut out and assembled. Now with the character, they can sort of design the colors of the, um, the racing car driver. They could put a logo on him. They could uh, obviously put their own face on the driver if they want to, or make up a sort of a character, like, I don't know, it could be an alien or something like that. All right. So, um, or it could be a, a Victorian character, as a lot of you are teaching the Victorians at Key Stage 2. Um, now, what we do with this then, we place that inside. Okay. And then hopefully now we can see a little bit of movement. Well done workshoppers, I hope you've enjoyed visiting the Windle Workshop and if you've enjoyed it so much then click the like button or even subscribe. Come and join me again to make some more fantastic projects.